Skylanders Giants is a spin-off sequel to the surprisingly popular Skylanders Spyro's Adventure. I say surprising because I didn't think it would be a hit, even though I loved the previous game. I thought it was too much of a gimmick and parents wouldn't pay out to get new characters and levels. Well, I was wrong as the original was one of the top sellers of the year. They've sold over 30 million toys and it will make over $500 million off it so far. I say this is a spin-off because Spyro is not the focus anymore. This is not his adventure. You can play as him as all the figurines are backwards compatible, but with the exception of the giant characters, there is no main lead. If you've never played a Skylanders game before, you have to play with the Portal of Power. This is the Portal of Power. As you can see, it glows. Ooh, trippy. You just place your Skylander on there and it'll light up to the appropriate color, and then you're ready to play. It's really that simple. It's just plug and play. Now, if you're new to the Skylanders franchise, you may notice there's a difference between my Portal of Power and your Portal of Power. Well, I'm using Spyro's Adventures Portal of Power. It's exactly the same, except no wires, which I personally like better, because then I can just keep it by my side and just switch out the guys and just go, all right, this one. Well, that wouldn't work. <laughs> but you know my point. Now it's corded, see? But it's a very, very, very long, ridiculously long cord. Which is good because then you can take the cord and trip people with it. <laughs> but you know what? If I had a choice, I'd still go with wireless. Even though the batteries are... Uh, I had to change them like two times this year. Which I don't think is that big a deal, but you know what? The cordless is... the cord is good if you don't want to worry about batteries. And I wish they made the option available, but there isn't. You have to go with corded. So if you have the original wireless, you're in luck. You place characters on the portal and they'll show up on the screen. You only have one character active per person at a time. The game can be played with two people, so if you have two players, you're going to need to have two Skylanders on the pad. Now the cool thing about the character pieces is that it will remember everything you did to that character. So it'll keep track of the upgrades to it, how much gold it's carrying, how much experience it has, and what level it is. Even if you're playing it at a friend's house, it'll still keep track of your stats without the need of any batteries. NFC technology or near field communications is what makes this possible. It's the same thing that's built into the Wii Pad controller. You know that rectangle thing on the left bottom of the controller? It's too bad you can't use that in this game. That would've been kinda cool. But there is a game coming up in Japan that's gonna use that functionality. But that's for another day. What's really great about this game is that the creators didn't just make a product to just haphazardly make a game around it. They really put a lot of thought and creativity in making both products. The story is about the bad guy from the previous game, Chaos, being banished to Earth and turned into a toy for the Skylanders game. He breaks free of his toy form and returns to the Skylanders world. And then he enlists the help of a giant robot to help him find an object of great power. The giants have returned to help the Skylanders defeat him. Now the characters were very fun to interact with, and everything was voice acted as well. The giants themselves are not just special characters that only come out at certain times during the game. They are fully playable characters like any other Skylander. They are extremely powerful and can really beat down the enemies that you come across. However, they are really slow moving, so you're going to want to change them out, unless you don't mind the slow pace. This game is a lot of fun to play. It has a lot of different level designs and gameplay for you to experience. I really liked that most of the time they would show you a whole level that you were exploring, because I always knew where the goal was. It made the world more fun to travel in. Now it's really a 3D platformer, much like a simpler version of Mario Galaxy. Each level would have a set path, but there were occasional branching paths. But these paths were often locked off to only be accessed by the appropriate class of Skylander. They did it so you'd have more incentive to buy more characters. Now I do think the Wii U has the best version. You can see on the Wii pad the character's stats and all the objectives and things to do in the world that you're in. Plus when you're playing the mini games, it was so much easier to control them than it would just using the controller. One of the major problems with this title itself has to do with one of the glaring issues with the gameplay. You still can't jump. It's beyond ridiculous at times. I have a Skylander who can fly, yet it can't fly over a two foot gap. It's being used in such a lazy way to stop the players from getting too far too quickly in the game. It bothered me in the first game when you couldn't jump, and it bothers me in this one as well. Luckily, it's being reported that the new game coming out this fall will finally add this basic character movement. So I can't wait to see how they make levels without having slight inclines so we can't progress through them that fast. If you like to battle, there's also a multiplayer mode. It's limited to two people, but there are a few different types for you to experience. 
There's the normal battling in the arena mode, Sky Goals, which is like Capture the Flag, Sky Gem Master, where you have to be the first to collect five gems, and Ring Out, which is exactly what it sounds like. You have to knock your opponent out of the ring. There are a couple options you could throw in, like having obstacles in the course, or choosing to level the playing field by making every Skylander the same level. Now, I did think the multiplayer mode was fun, but I personally like the story mode more. There was just so much to do. You could collect hats for your Skylanders to wear, which do status upgrades, or play Skystones, which was a simple game to play where you have to beat the other opponent's tiles by having more spikes on the side of the tiles. I know that doesn't make any sense, but it is hard to explain. It's really one of those games that you best play it to understand it. Skylanders Giants did something I wasn't expecting, as it was more fun than the original game. I think they took all the best parts of the first game and then improved on them. It's rare for a gimmick game to be so good. But it really is! I can see kids and teenagers alike collecting and leveling up these Skylanders, so I think it's definitely worth a buy.